I'm back! Instant Replay presented by Cheese It Week 29 coming at you, but not from the comforts of the studio, Bobby. We are sweating in your happy place. We're here in the sixth Cup the Owners Cup on Wednesday, Andrew. Yep, BMO training ground, and uh, it's a little bit hot, as were some of the fan bases around the league after some calls this weekend. Yes, Yes, Seattle fans, we will get to you, but we start with Portland, Houston. And so we head up to BBVA Compass Stadium and take a look at a goal that was and then wasn't in the 44th minute. Houston up 2-1, and here come the Timbers. Diego Valeri gets the ball on the wing, and boom, Diego Chara scores, but, but, but. Video review says, uh-uh. VR Edvin Jurasevich says, yeah, that's offside, and then Jared Rufo agrees after review. Bobby, what do you think? I've said this all season, Andrew. If it's close, the tie goes to the attacker. If we look at video review, A, why did they get a video review in the first place when it wasn't a clear and obvious error when they originally allowed the goal? But once you do look at that video, how can you be 100% sure that Valeria is offside? If not 100% sure, the tie should go to the attacker. I'm with you there, Bobby. Valeria is leaning, but I cannot tell for sure that he is offside. Therefore, this is not clear or obvious, and it should not have been reversed. But it wasn't, and Houston had an opportunity to go up 3-1 in the 64th minute. Faro Minotas makes a run into the box and goes down under contact from Timbers keeper Steve Clark. But Marufo's not buying it, and he gives him a yellow card for simulation. My take? Yeah, Rufo's right. That's not a penalty, but I think the yellow card is over the top. There was a little contact there. Word, word, I'm with you on that, but we had a similar situation in the 78th minute. Houston is up 3-1 to one at this point when Romel Kyoto goes down in the box. When I saw this play, Andrew, I gave a round of applause to both the referee and Portland center defender Larice Maviala because it was fantastic defending. When you defend, there is a spectrum of contact that you are allowed to do. And the attacker is allowed to go down, but if it's called, it is the wrong call. It is because the attacker has deceived the referee. Fantastic defending by Maviala to throw the attacker off and wonderful refereeing to not call the penalty. It takes a former central defender to be okay with hands to the chest when he's beaten. Maviala is beaten on this play. Romo Kyoto is in behind and he reaches out and pushes him in the chest and throws him off balance. For me, this is a penalty kick. I would have called it. Because you're soft. 86 minute we go and David Guzman appears to put his studs into Tomas Martinez and Andrew. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Appears? Come on, you're soft playing that one because this is a straight red card. I don't know how in any way Marufo doesn't pull out the red on this. Look at where he lands with this challenge. That is just below the knee. The ball's nowhere near. There's excessive force, and it definitely endangers the safety of Tomas Martinez. That is a red card. Look, I'm not going to talk you out of thinking it was a red. There was definitely grounds for it. But when I watched this, I wouldn't have sent him off. He doesn't go into the straight leg. He doesn't stand down. He doesn't even attack the ball with his studs. He went in for the ball, and yes, he made contact with the opponent. For me, it just didn't mean the excessive force level necessary for serious foul play. Yeah, Bobby, you're definitely not talking me out of a red on that one. We go to BC play Seattle, Vancouver, and we've got another conundrum because Ozzy Alonso got a whole lot of Alfonso Davies in the 36th minute. Robert Zabigo said play on when it happened, but they went back to video review to see if it was serious foul play. Zabiga said, mm, not that, but it is a yellow card, and I agree with him, but I wonder what you think. Yeah, Andrew, I obviously think it's a yellow card. I couldn't have said that Guzman's was a yellow card and then try and say that Alonzo's was a red, but you need to walk me through your thinking here. Do his studs not go into Davies' ankle and potentially endanger the safety of an opponent? They absolutely do, and there's a ton of plays on the field that endanger the safety of an opponent, but don't necessarily meet red card criteria. For me, the difference on this one is the context around the entire play. Davies lunges out just as Alonzo is starting to try to clear the ball. I think he would have stayed with the sweep had his leg not been there. As it was, he came down, it was reckless, and that makes it a yellow card for me. So did he endanger the safety of the opponent? Depends on your perspective. Was it excessive force? For me, no. I think all your answers are random, Andrew, but let's move on anyway. Let's go to the 87th minute for a play that's near and dear to the instant replay heart. Christian Rodon gets tangled up with Alfonso Davies. And what is that? Is Rodon hitting him in the, in the 
Jingles! Yeah, it definitely looks like it. And there was nothing called on this play, but I think that's a yellow card. It's pretty clear for me. He intentionally puts his leg up to get him. They've been targeting Davies all night. That is unsportsmanlike conduct. That should have been a yellow card. Bobby, you're passionate about Jingles, and I cannot blame you. We go to Audi Field, DC Red Bulls, and the Atlantic Cup, and we are going all the way to the 92nd minute for this maybe a handball on the wheel. The broadcast did a great job of winding it back and giving us angles, Bobby. Do you agree with Taylor Schwalman that this hit him in the chest? It's pretty irrefutable evidence from the cameraman here, Weeby. Excellent work from the ESPN broadcast and Alan Kelly and his crew. Let's go to the 96th minute. Michael Murillo goes into a tackle on Lucho Acosta. And A, any tackle on Lucho Acosta these days should be an automatic red card. Let that man ball out. But B, Andrew, this probably should have been a red card anyway. Yeah, look, this is an automatic red card for me. When you jump and two-footed lunge into the ball, that's definitely endangering the safety. That's definitely excessive force. And Taylor Coleman said it. You don't need to touch the ball. This is a red card, man. But that wasn't the only two-footer this weekend. San Jose sporting Kansas City 49 minutes in, and Anibal Godoy gets Ilya Sanchez with an ugly tackle. I said red on Murillo. What do you say on this one? I say red on this one. Anytime you... Anytime you jump up, jump down, and lunge at the ball with your studs exposed, it should be a red card for me. If we're gonna talk about excessive force beyond what you actually need to do to win a tackle, if we're gonna talk about endangering an opponent, this is the exact example of both. Is there anything more dangerous in soccer than jumping up, down, and then lunging at the ball with your studs? Absolutely a red card. The call was yellow card on the field by Dave Gantar, and I was, for a while, they're gonna stick with that. But I think you're right, Bobby. Look at this. How can this not be in danger of safety? How can this not be excessive force? This tackle has got to be wiped from the game, and I'm okay with your take. I think that's a red card as well. Hold up, hold up. I know we were talking about two-footed challenges and smooth transition. Good work, my dude. But we got to back up. Did you not see that back pass in the 53rd minute from Kaku that Luis Robles picked up? The score was 1-1. One to one. They end up tying 3-3. Three to three. And Weeby, that could have been an indirect free kick inside the Red Bulls box for DC United. Yeah, come on, that was a back pass. I think we all saw it, including all of you on Twitter that blew us up. But ultimately, it's not eligible for video review. It doesn't fall in one of the four buckets. So the referees can't do anything about that after the fact, but good eyes, everybody. Keep the bad tackles rolling. We're going out to Commerce City, Colorado, Atlanta, and Shaquel Zangashi in stoppage time. It's his studs on Joseph Martinez. Soren Stoika says, yep, that's a yellow card. It goes to video review, and the yellow card is upheld. And this is where the rule book gets confusing. I feel confident that this challenge endangers the safety of Joseph Martinez. Just look at it. A reasonable person could easily say it's excessive force. And yet, I think it's a yellow. It looks bad, but it's more unlucky than malicious. He slides in to win the ball with laces and does. But timing, Joseph's challenge makes it look awful. I think it's a yellow card. Good job there from the referees. What do you mean this is where the rule book gets confusing? The whole damn rule book is confusing. Now let's end the show with some props. We go to Sandy, Utah, where Real Salt Lake hosted Minnesota United. The score is one to one in the 87th minute and Miguel Ibarra appears to get his second goal and give the Loons the win. But wait, while the goal is originally given, they go back to video review, and after video review, the goal is taken away because Darwin Quintero was offside before his pass in to Ivar. And when you look at the video, it's pretty clear. Wonderful use of video review, even if it took a little long to get there. And that's it from us. So if you have takes from week 29, you know how to get at us. In the meantime, Bobby, give me your Twitter cell on Campeones Cup. MLS, Mexico, our champion, their champion. I think that's really all it is. That is all it takes. 8.15 p.m. Eastern, ESPN Univision. Watch the game. We'll be there. See you next time.